Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at how to find a maximum or minimum turning point for a function. And we're going to do this by using our first derivative and then we're also going to introduce the second derivative. So the first derivative is going to be used to find what these turning points are. And when we're talking about turning points, we can look at this graph that I've drawn. We're talking about the points where the curve turns around. So in this case, we're looking at this point. And up here, we're looking at this point. You can see here that the curve turns. The gradients on all these tangents on this section are clearly positive. And the gradients of all the tangents, if I was to draw them in, here, would be negative. We can see that it's all sloping down, and over here, it was sloping up. We'll just clear that. Okay, what about over here? We still have a negative gradient, if it touches that point there once. But as soon as I go past the turning point, and I draw a tangent, it has a gradient that is positive. So in other words, between these two turning points, the gradient is always negative, and then after we turn, it goes positive. And after we turn over here, it's positive. So what happens as we get closer to these points? What happens to the gradient of these tangents if I keep drawing them? Well, eventually, they are going to be flat. The gradient at the turning point equals zero because it's flat. It's at the very bottom. So if we draw a tangent, it goes horizontal or flat straight underneath. Same with this point up here where we can see the curve bend. We know that if we drew a tangent at this point, it's just a straight line over the top. So here the derivative again or the gradient at this of the tangent at this point would equal zero. So that's how you find turning points, by letting the derivative or the gradient equal zero and then solving the derivative function. And we'll look at that in a second. But it's also important to note the difference between a maximum and a minimum turning point. When we say a maximum turning point, we're talking about a point that is up the top of the bend. So in this case, we can see that the curve goes up all the way up until this point and then goes down. So it's a maximum turning point. This is a maximum turning point. Whereas this one is at the bottom. The curve bends around and goes back up. So this is a minimum turning point. So in other words, the max means, and means the turning point is at the top and the minimum means the turning point is at the bottom of the curve. So when the gradients change direction, they go from negative to positive or positive to negative. That is what a turning point is and you know if it's a maximum or minimum because of where it is placed in that curve or in that bend. And the way we actually are going to definitely find whether it's a maximum or minimum is going to be by using the second derivative. Okay, so let's start with our first step before we look at the second derivative. Our first step, if we had the equation of this line, which is y equals x cubed minus 9x, our first step is to find the derivative because the derivative tells us our gradient of the tangents and we know that at these turning points the gradient equals zero. So I want to find the gradient function or the derivative function. And we know that the derivative here of x cubed minus 9x is going to be first of all be to bring the 3 to the front and minus 1. So we're going to get 3x squared minus 9 because this number in front of the x is always the derivative of that part when it's just x by itself. So once I have this derivative, Instead of subbing in or replacing this x with some kind of value to find a derivative or a gradient for a particular tangent, I actually want to know when the derivative is zero. I want to find for what x points does this derivative equal zero 
because we know here that at the turning points, the tangent is a straight line, so it has a derivative of zero. So I make y dash, and I'm going to put this in red, equals zero. And that's our rule. That's our rule for a turning point. Okay, so number three will be to put zero where that y dash is and go zero equals 3x squared minus 9. And then we're just going to solve this equation. So we can take 9 to the other side and the opposite of plus nine, uh, minus 9 is plus 9. So we're going to get 9 equals 3x squared. And then we're going to divide both sides by 3. And we're going to get, I'm going to move the x squared over here. I'm going to get x squared equals 9 divided by 3, which is 3. And then if I do the square root of both of these sides, remember that I have to do plus minus here. I'm going to get x equals plus minus square root of 3. The reason I do a plus and a minus is because negative root 3, if I square it, will also come out as 3. So it could be negative or positive whenever you use a square root sign. So remember to use plus minus whenever you do that. Okay, so that's given me x equals plus minus root 3 which has given me these points. So I can draw in here that that is root 3 and this point here is minus root 3. Now because we're talking about a point, I don't just need the x-coordinate, I need the y-coordinate. So I need to sub or replace these x-values back in our original equation. So I'm going to put that back in. So I'm going to do step number four here is to put plus root three in and then minus root three. So we're going to find the y coordinate here. I want to find this part and then this part. Okay, so y will equal root three cubed minus nine root three. And then that is going to come out as y equals root 3 cubed will be 3 root 3 minus 9 root 3, which is going to equal 3 root 3 minus 9 root 3 minus 6 root 3. So I know down here it is minus 6 root 3, and that is our minimum height or minimum y value. Okay, so I know that the point at that when x equals root 3, there is a turning point, and I know that that point is root 3 minus 6 root 3. And you can do the same thing for negative root 3 by subbing that x value into the original equation. That would be step number 4, but I'll just do this first point for this example. Okay, so we know this point now. Now I need to know if whether it's a minimum or a maximum. And we can tell looking at this graph that this is a minimum. But what if you don't have a graph and what if you don't or you can't form a graph? And in a lot of cases, you don't need to worry about doing a graph. You can just get the equation, make the derivative equal zero, and you're going to find your turning points. The next step is to use the second derivative. So we're going to differentiate this first derivative equation. We're going to differentiate this one over here. So pretending that y dash is now our y and we're going to go a second level. We're going to go y dash dash equals, we do the same step, we put the 2 to the front, times it by 3 to get 6x and we know that minus 9 has no derivative. So our second derivative, y dash dash, which is all can also be written as dy squared over dx squared. It can be written either way. Remember, that's just another symbol. And that is going to be equal to 6x. Okay, so what do we do with this new equation? And I'll just make that a bit clearer for you there. Well, what the second derivative tells us is the concavity. So we know that the first derivative is all about the gradient. We can put in any x value and know 
the gradient or the slope of a tangent at that point. So the second derivative is used to find the concavity. It tells us whether a point sits on a part of this graph that is concave up or concave down. Is this section of the graph here concave up or concave down? Well, we can say it bends up. So it, this, this curve, this dent, is facing upwards, so it is concave up. So I'll write that in black here. It is concave up. And then we know this bit is facing down. So wherever this bend faces, that tells you the concavity of it. Now, why is this important? Why is it important to know whether one of these points is part of a curve that faces down or part of a curve that faces up? And notice that all these points in this area, here, 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 are all concave up. They're all part of this concavity. And then when we move over to this side, we can see that the graph starts to face down. So all these points here are concave down. So don't think it's just one point. So if the stationary or the turning point, we also say stationary point because the gradient isn't moving there. If the turning point is facing up, we know that it's a minimum. So in other words, if the concavity is up, which means that the second derivative is positive, positive, then we have a minimum turning point. And we know here that if it's concave down, then our second derivative at that point will be negative because it's facing down. So what we need to do here with our next step here, I'm going to say step number five is to use this, is we're looking at the concavity of these points. Okay, so I'm going to substitute or replace the x with our turning point x values. So I'm going to go y dash dash, and I'm just going to do it for this point, equals six, and now I'm going to put in root three, because that's our point. Now, is 6 root 3 positive or negative? Well, it is positive. So it's greater than 0, therefore positive, therefore concave up. So it looks like this. It's on this part of the curve. If it's concave down, it would be this. It would be one of these points. It, will, it would be this point, but we're actually on this point. That's what it tells us. And therefore, we know it is a minimum turning point because it's facing up. And you can do the same process subbing in minus root 3 and you'll find that the second derivative is negative and therefore it is a maximum turning point. So there you go. The first derivative will tell us the gradient and we want to know when the gradient is 0 to find a turning point. And the second derivative tells us the concavity. It tells us which way the curve is bending. Is it bending up or is it bending down? So if we've got concave down, if this curve is facing down, then it's negative. And if it's up, then the second derivative will be positive. So that's how you can find out whether your turning point is a minimum or a maximum. Okay, guys, hope that helps. That also introduces you to the concept of the second derivative and we're going to look a bit more at that in the next video. So please subscribe and share. See you later.